What is good guys? So uh, this is going to be how to finish Team Affinity Season 2. Uh, I made the Season 1 video. It is somewhat similar. Uh, maybe you guys can figure it out if you have already seen that one. But this will be kind of an update uh, on how to do Season 2. Some things have changed. Uh, some are the same. It's really up to you, um, but I'm going to get into it, show you guys how to do it, right? So, uh, when we first get into Team Infinity Season 2, you will be at zero. Um, what I would urge you guys to do is, if you're going to do any exchanges, go ahead and do them. You can see I've done some uh, for some of these, and then do the showdowns for each division. There are three showdowns each. Um, if you guys need help with that, I do will have a showdown video coming out tomorrow. Uh, it's one of the older showdowns, but it will still apply to uh, all these new ones. They are basically the same basic formula. I did them all. No real problem there. Um, and then what you're going to do is that's going to put you at 20,000. Uh, if you do the top end one, that's going to put you at 30,000. And then what we're going to have is some of these AL East moments. I think these are... Uh, 7,000, 10,000, something worth that um, in uh, Team Affinity bonus, right? So you're looking at at least 20,000 um, if you do the bare minimum. That's going to get you a future star from one of these teams and a team captain from one of these teams. And uh, what you're going to do with that is you're going to do your captain's stat missions and uh, your future star's PXP mission. And you're going to make a lineup of each of these divisions. You're going to take whatever future star you pick and whatever captain you pick. So, you know, you're not going to want a ton of pitchers, but you are going to want some. And you're not going to want to really double up on positions. Try to, uh, you know, try to plan out a full nine-man lineup while you're taking these future stars and whatnot. Uh, I don't really have a lot of input on which one you guys should be taking. I don't think it's a huge difference. Uh, and you're probably going to have to do all of them anyway. So then from there, what we're doing, we're hopping into Conquest, and we are doing these three Team Affinity Conquests. Uh, you can do the Kaiju Conquest if you want to while you're here, but uh, do these three Team Affinity Conquests. It is a lot, right? It's 30 total games. It's basically doing the USA map, uh, so I would not expect it to go quickly. Um, at minimum, you're playing 30 games, and you have to fill out the map. It's going to take a while. Uh, after you guys do that, you are going to be looking at uh, an additional, what, 15,000? 30,000 for each conquest. That's going to get you to 50,000. So that is going to get you an additional future star, an additional team captain, and another future star. So you're going to get two future stars and a team captain. Uh, if you did your last ones, that's 7,000, I think, more. So you're basically at this uh, big one. Uh, maybe you do some of the moments or something like that. Maybe you do an exchange to get here, um, and then you're getting these 97s. This is the bread and butter. This is where you're going to start to make a lot of progress. Um, after you get these 97s, there are these incognito missions. You can see they give 5,000 team affinity progress, and they are repeatable for every 1,000 PXP you earn. Um, and that might sound like a lot at the start, and it is for certain divisions, but for other ones, it's not, right? So uh, that's what you guys are doing, is you're getting these 97s, you're doing all the missions for these under players, these henchmen type players, and then you're running the new Team Affinity 2 uh, mini season. If you have not ran mini seasons, it's here. You go to mini seasons, it's going to be this one. Uh, do not get confused with this other one. It is Team Affinity Season 2. And you're winning anywhere from 14 to like 17 games, whatever it takes for you to make the playoffs. And then you need to win the championship in there. Um, if you guys struggle with what players are eligible for mini seasons, I've seen some people have. Obviously, this one is all eligible players. But sometimes it will lo it'll load in like your regular lineup. Uh, just click on a player. It will only show you. Once you click on a player, it will only show you eligible players from there. So uh, that's a way, you know, you would just go through, you would click and replace the ineligible player with somebody that's eligible, something like that. Um, so do that for Team Affinity Season 2 um, and start playing those games and you're going to start making progress. 
and eventually you're going to get to the point where your mini season team uh, looks something like this, right? It is all 97 overall um, Team Affinity Incognito bosses, and you're just earning PXP with them over and over again. Uh, all pitchers. You can see I've still got some future stars I've been slacking on, but for the most part, uh, I have finished pretty much all of the under missions. You can see um, Graceffo's done, Leiter's done, Bryce Miller's done, Tiedemann's done. Uh, Williams is done, Flores is done, Fulton's done, Griff McGarry's done, Schuster's done, um, some of the captains are done, uh, where are they? I haven't done a lot of the captains, but, uh, Verlander's done, Darvish is done, Lodolo's done, I got all their stat missions, Oswalt is done, um, stuff like that, right? So, you're just knocking those out, and then you're starting to get all these 97s that you can use, and that's when you're going to start making huge progress. Um, for every five mini season games you win, you do get uh, a voucher. A voucher is equivalent to 4,000 progress. Um, over five games, if you have multiple of those 97s, you're probably uh, getting one of those PXP goals done. Uh, that's going to be another, what, 5,000? That's 9,000 almost every five games. Um, and then certain divisions are way stronger, right? The AOS is super strong, like McCullers is a dog, uh, Chili Davis is awesome, uh, switch it in DH, play him at DH, he'll rack up a lot of PXP, Jimmy Fox is awesome at first, third, or catcher, he would probably be my uh, most recommended one, I think he's played the best, those are online stats, if I swap to CPU, you can see he has batted 600 with 20 home runs, probably the best one for me so far, uh, Seager's not bad, he was the last one I took personally, but uh, Napoli is really good. Also, you can see 564, 28 home runs. He is P3 for me. Um, yeah, so that's what you're doing. You're getting to the point where you can make a full lineup out of those. If you guys want my opinion on like which ones you should take first, uh, I would not do pitchers. I feel like there are so many pitchers to do with the team captains and the future stars, and they're going to take at least three starts to get done. Um, and, you know, it could take more than that, depending on if you get shelled, um, if you can't pitch three full innings with them, stuff like that. So, uh, look, I'll go in order of who I would take in what order for each division. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to do that and you want you really want to use somebody else or you think you have a more efficient way of doing it, go ahead. This would be how I would do it. A at least, I would take uh, Eddie Murray first. I would take Euculus second. You're like, they're both first basemen. Uh, Euculus can play third with diamond defense. And now I'll take one of these pitchers and just pitch with them. Once you have these two hitters racking up PXP for you and you're getting a pitcher every fifth start, every fourth start, uh, I mean, it's going to fly by at that point. Uh, in at least one of the weaker divisions, it is a lot of pitchers. I would take Tim Raines first, and then either you can take John Birdie. I don't think he looks great. Uh, I haven't personally used them. This division has flown for me, and all I've used is DeGrom and Tim Raines. So if you want to, go Raines, Birdie, DeGrom, or Raines, DeGrom, Birdie. Uh, that will get the NL East done for you pretty quickly. AL Central is a weaker division. Uh, here, you're probably, if you have outfield spots available, I think K-Line should be your first choice. If not, I would take Witt. Uh, he's been all right for me. Uh, he's getting some PXP. So I would take one of those two first, and then uh, Sonny Gray is pretty solid. And then from there, you can pick whoever you want. You, if you're getting the pattern, it's uh, take two batters first, so you can be getting got constant PXP with them, and then get a pitcher third, and that is just going to give you a ton of PXP. Every, like, four start, you're going to be getting, like, 300, 400 PXP for that division, uh, and it's, it's going to fly by. Uh, Central is really good. I would recommend taking Adam Dunn first, then Ernie Banks, and then probably Helsley. Helsley is a good one to take because uh, he is the only relief pitcher boss. So any if your starter can't get through three innings, uh, he is a great option to just pull out the pin pretty much every game. Doesn't really matter if he's tired or not. But I would take Dunn, Ernie, 
and uh, Helsley. I think Dunn's probably been my other best one. I mean, you can look at that, batting 700 with 13 home runs. He is racking up PXP. Uh, AOS is probably the easiest one to do. There's not really a wrong choice. For me, I would take Fox, Napoli, and then it's either McCullers or Chili Davis. Um, if you don't want to pick a pitcher from this division and you want to double down on a different division, you could definitely just skip over McCullers and take three position players and knock it out that way. Um, but I think that's the easiest division to do. I think they have the best cards. Um, and then NL West, the obvious first pick is Muncie. And then I thought I'd like Crone, but he has really struggled. Uh, maybe I just wasn't locked in while I was using them, or maybe I don't like his swing. Uh, Nick Ahmed looks pretty good, especially against lefties. He could be very solid, or Gwen. But uh, anyway, I would take Muncie, and then one of those other position players, and then probably Matt Cain, um, and then that will get you done. Pretty much, if you can get three of these 97s and one of them is a pitcher, uh, you will eventually get this done. Uh, I have only played one and a half mini seasons. I think I'm at 15 wins in my second mini season. I haven't even got to the playoffs yet. And AOS is done. Uh, NL East is basically done. NL Central is basically done. So I just got to prioritize these three divisions. Um, I'm going to get a ton of vouchers. I think you get one for every five games you win, no matter what. And even after the season resets, uh, it keeps how many games you've won. So, uh, you know, if you win 23 games in one season, uh, you only got to win two more to get another voucher. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, I think you get one just for making the playoffs. You get two for winning your first round game. And I think you get three or five, something like that, for winning the championship. You get a lot. You get basically 40000 uh, for winning a mini season, something like that. So uh, this flies by, I promise. It is not nearly as bad as the last one. And if you guys really want to, if you can get a full lineup of those 97s, uh, the event right now is eligible um, for, you can't see my team right now, I guess, because I'm in the event. But uh, all those 97s are eligible in the event. If you do not want to offline grind and you want to maybe work towards either uh, getting some cards that you missed out on or these two rewards, uh, that can be a good way of getting PXP. Obviously, you're playing on All-Star, which is a higher difficulty than you're probably playing many seasons on. And you're getting that online multiplier bonus. So, uh, yeah. So, that is Team Affinity 2. Um, it's pretty easy. It's a lot easier than the first one. Uh, I have barely been grinding it at all. An added benefit is not only are you getting um, a ton of these set 2 cards. You can see I'm already at Goose. I'm already at 103 cards. We are on the way to Randy. Uh, you are also getting a lot of XP. Every time you get one of those 97 overalls, you get 4,000 XP. Um, you can do the math. I think there's five times six divisions. Uh, you know, whatever. It's a lot. It's a lot of XP, and you're going to be getting your gameplay XP. So uh, definitely knock out Team Infinity 2. It is pretty productive, uh, and it's pretty rewarding. And yeah, guys, so that's going to be it. If this was helpful for you guys, feel free to like and subscribe. Peace.